As a teacher, I like using my iPad to support me teaching as it takes me away from the front of the classroom, supports me in my behaviour management in allowing me to move around the classroom and it also helps me to model student work by taking images and sending it straight out to my board. But one of the biggest things that I've really enjoyed using lately, so especially with like A-level students, when I've been able to um, sit down over the, the past few lessons and I've been able to bring up a PowerPoint and I've being able to annotate as I go along with the PowerPoint. Um, so if I take up an example of what we were doing earlier on, with my sixth formers, I was looking at being able to derive the equations for resistance um, in series and parallel. The way that I first laid it out was all to do with PowerPoints and animations at given times, but actually being able to talk through the stages and write it at the same time is just a massive support. So in the example here, we were able to go over, well, actually, where is the current at the junctions breaking off? Why do we see a pattern between the two? to ammeters that are at particular points. Um, and it highlights it better for the students. It's just something which is more visual. So as we started working through um, the, the examples, it was then quite easy to be able to show, well, we, the current within this part of the circuit, if there's two sets of two amps, we can imagine within a parallel circuit, it then breaks off. Or we end up seeing a certain amount of current going down along uh, a particular branch. But at the same time, why each unit of charge would still have the same amount of energy. So this has been just a game changer in terms of me being able to write as I go because I, I quite like the sound of my own voice and for the students themselves um, as much as I'm sure they like listening to me they also like to have something which is visual in their notes as well. So we'd gone through an example of where we'd calculated uh, the resistance in total and the slide which I'd normally look at is this which is breaking down each step individually. Um, but for the students themselves, it may not be the, the best way to do it. So the way that I approached it in today's lesson is within the iPad, uh, set up a blank slide and was able to say to the students, right, if I have a circuit which is like this, and then as I'm drawing the circuit, I can ask the students to describe individually uh, the components and what we would expect at each of the components. So we went through the steps of being able to say, right, this is R1, this is R2, what would we expect of the combined resistance within this part of the circuit, what would we expect of the current, what would we expect of potential difference and within that then we were able to go through the equation step by step and really quite slowly. The, the advantage for me is I'm not very good at being able to upload work quickly, you know for, for a lot of teachers I think it's another thing to do um, for students that have been um, isolating, for example. Um, but with this, all I have done is used my iPad to broadcast the screen to then share to students um, who are isolating at home. So as I am going through this derivation with my iPad in front of me, not only am I talking to the class and the group whilst writing everything down, uh, I'm also interacting with that person that's on the other side of the computer because they're isolating, but they're getting exactly the same lesson. And for me, because I'm able to then live stream it, I'm feeling as though the students are making far more progress at home because you'll be able to teach them as though they're right in front of you by using this instead. Uh, again, we went through the step-by-step -step here and something that I might have normally spent, say, 10, 15 minutes on, I've spent probably more close to 30, but through that, I've been able to direct questions. Now, as I'm delivering something on PowerPoint here, I can not only um, deliver it as my, my slide where I'm making all my notes, but I've also got the, the options put in my notes. So, um, say for example, if very much, um, very much what most teachers do is make stuff up on the spot, they will always forget that key bit of information right to the last minute and then go, oh, I'm just going to go back three slides and this is what I meant at this point uh, and it just breaks that continuity of the information that you're trying to give to students. So for, for me, we, within the notes and being able to put in key pieces of information that I would be expecting to share with students at given points, it's almost like a prompter. You know, as, a, as someone, as a public speaker, you'd have flashcards or you, you would have prompt cards. That for me is my prompt uh, as well within in that. So for sixth form that's very much how I've been using the, the iPad to go around. With um, other year groups though it's been um, slightly different. As to why I can't get it to rotate that's another question. Oh yeah. 
perfect, there we go. And then go back to Marco. As I'm going around the classroom and speaking to other students, I'd be able to take an image of people's work or take a photo of people's work and then it's as simple as putting a mark up. So here, for example, the student has highlighted to weigh uh, 2.10 grams of the, uh, the chemical that's being used. And we would look at, well, actually, what is the skill within this and how would they be able to do it accurately um, with the equipment that they're using. So here we would be able to write over the top and make notes that, for example, to make it accurate or to, to weigh accurately, we would need to use a balance at, at least two decimal places. That is one way that I'd used it. The other day I was teaching uh, my, my top set year 10 or my triple year 10s. And one of the things that was brought to my attention was the, the students didn't know how to use their calculator to write in standard form. So I asked the, the students, can you use standard form in your calculators? And I was met with very, you know, a very solemn silence across the classroom. It was almost like I dropped one of my one of my jokes. And uh, the, the kids themselves just had no idea of how to do it. It's really difficult to show to a whole group of students what I might be doing at a particular point. So, uh, especially using a calculator with a small screen. So all I did was got one of the students uh, to get the calculator so that I could take a photo of a scientific calculator, which they might have, rather than taking a, a photo of my own, which might be slightly more advanced than the ones that the students are using, uh, and ones that they might not be used to, um, I know that the students will have a copy of this calculator or uh, through the markup in being able to edit the photo itself. What I could do is I could highlight particular buttons. So the ones um, for the, the students, which were of particular use, um, if I change to a different color, the ones that were of particular use to the students was the SD button and talking through the use of the SD button, talking through the use of the engineering button and talking through the use of the standard form button to the point where I could write a calculation next to the calculator of how they would enter it into their calculator. So for example, they needed to work out how fast a wave was moving if their wave was um, are using the wave equation of V equals F times by lambda. Now I can change the colour of um, the colour of the text that's being used to suit the background because I know that using a mottled tabletop from a science uh, classroom isn't always going to be the best. Um, but I can easily adjust all the um, all the values within this. I can make sure that the students themselves can see it clearly from the back, the front of the classroom. Um, so I would then go through, right, we need to work out the wavelength and I know that the velocity is equal to 2.2 times by 10 to the seven meters per second. Now with that, I would get the students to talk through how they would enter that onto their calculator. And by putting one bracket two, the point button two, times 10 to the power of X button and then seven and then closing brackets before moving on to the next step. The students themselves would follow that through with me. So by the end of the, the calculation that we went through as an example, all of the students ended up with exactly the same answer rather than you ending up with lots of students with different answers and you're trying to figure out on the spot why students have ended up with different answers. <laughs> Okay, so I like being able to use my iPad as a teacher because it takes me away from being at the front of the classroom, allows me flexibility in approaches to behavior management techniques. I'm gonna pause because I've forgotten. <laughs> so in terms of it, the three things that I wanna talk about is it moving me or taking me away from the front of the classroom, it allows me um, to position myself better within the classroom and it's um, a better way of modeling using student work, it's one of them. So 